What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe. Today we have a very special guest back for a bat number two, Yonder Alonzo, Mr. 305. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. We saw in the first video with Yonder, he made a huge adjustment to his swing. It paid off almost immediately. And one of the coolest things about this um, is the all-star game that year you made and it was played in your home state of Florida and your home city of Miami. What was that like for you? Man, it was uh, four days of no sleep. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, an incredible, incredible time. Uh, my dad enjoyed it so much. I mean, everybody enjoyed it, of course. But I remember going into the offseason and saying, you know, I, I know the All-Star game is in Miami and you know, I can't like let people down. Like I can't be <laughs> home in Miami, like watching the all-star game at my house. Like I got to be a part of it. And you know, that was another, another thing that I had in my head, right? Like I can't pass up on this opportunity. Like I got to be there. There's, there's no way I'm going to be at home watching the all-star game while it's in Miami. You mm -hmm. know, like, no, that, that's just not, that, that is a no for me. I got to <laughs> be home. I got to be home for this. And yeah, then next thing you know, I, I'll never forget Bob Melvin told me I made the All-Star game and I just literally started crying right there. And, uh, you know, it was, it was an accomplishment for sure. Um, I, I was just very ecstatic and very happy for, for everybody, you know, everybody around me and, you know, my teammates and everybody that had to put a lot of effort into this and the grinds. And there's so many things that go in your head, right? And like my parents and everybody. So it was great. It was awesome. My wife, okay. my kids. I can't even imagine, you know, like the sense of pride that you had, because if anyone doesn't know, I mean, Miami is a hotbed for baseball and you guys have your own culture out there. All right. you guys growing up, baseball is, it's it, man. That's, you know, oh, obviously yeah. there's some football down in Florida, but baseball, especially in, in Miami, that's a huge community. And for you to be able to, you know, make this adjustment, make the all-star right. team, represent your city. It's just like, it's just such a cool story. Like, I'm so happy right. we're here sharing it right now. Right, yeah. I lived half a mile from the stadium. You know, back then, that stadium was the Orange Bowl. So, mm -hmm. I used to sneak my ways into watching a lot of Miami uh, Hurricane games in, the, in that in that actual <laughs> place. So, you know, that little Havana area for me was really my home um, and where I grew up and where, you know, I did a lot of uh, fun things with friends and, you know, got into football stadiums and got into, you know, the games, the big games against the you know, Florida State, the Gators, all these great, great That's awesome. games, right? And here we are uh, in the All-Star game in Miami, yeah. The U represent. Who Who else was in the game from Miami? I don't... Nobody, just me. It was just you? I was the only guy. From from the Miami guys, I was the only guy, yeah. You got You had to have someone represent the crew, and you did it. I did That's it, pretty man. That's pretty awesome, I remember, You know, I remember, like, a bunch of the guys, Gio Gonzalez and Yasmani mm -hmm. Grandal, and, you know, a lot of Miami guys, John Jay they were so happy for me, man. Like they were just awesome. so super pumped and all the text messages and gosh, so many guys texting me from Miami and just how happy they were for me. And yeah, man, it was, it was super, super cool. And, uh, you know, definitely four days I would never forget. I didn't even want to sleep. You know, they, they say <laughs> you don't sleep during those days. And I was like, I don't want to sleep. Like, you want it really and take it all in. I want to really take it all in. You know, I just want to take it all in. So it was a lot of fun. So that, yeah, you get to the all-star game um, you got two at bat. So first at bat, you you work a a, a knock against Zach Grinky. So you got that out of the way. You get the hit. Like that's got to be like kind of like a sigh relief. Were you nervous like playing or was it? Dude, I'm home. It was crazy because you know I was thinking like yeah I'll probably play like the seventh, seven eight nine. You know whatever. I'll get one at bat. Cool. That's good with me. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, Smoke plays like three innings. Gets two at bats, three innings, and they say, "Hey, you're going in." And I'm like, I'm "Like, oh shit, it's the fourth inning." <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I'm gonna have four innings to play. Like, I'm, this is the fourth inning. I'm going in right now. Like, I was pumped, right? Like, five innings for myself. I can really enjoy myself and have fun and see what it's about. And uh, I'm facing Granky, who I'd faced with the Dodgers forever. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, I'm like one for twenty off Granky, <laughs> and I got to face Granky on my first time in the All Star game. Sure enough, I get a, you know, bloop hit to right, you know, just straight leg kick. And it would have probably been without the leg kick, a, a roll over first. And I was able to fight it off and get a base hit. And I'm like, that's it. 
I got a base hit now. In the you know, all-star game, bro. Yeah, this is my time now. Like, you know, I feel, I'm feeling good right now. Um, so, yeah. and then Who was the manager? The uh, it was Tito Francona. He couldn't make it. Um, so the, the bench coach was, was the guy and Sandy Alomar was one of the other guys. And yeah, it was great. It was, it was, uh, it was awesome. It really so they was. knew it was up. Like we got to get yonder in the game and have him play because this is it, man. I mean, like, like we yeah. said, it's like a once in a lifetime thing. And like a lot of shit has to line up for you to be able to be in this game. Like it has to be in Everything. Miami, like in your career, like that doesn't happen. Like, you know, teams Everything. get all-star games once every 20 years right everything had li- really lined up and and i was just ecstatic and i think you know justin i think smoke was very happy for me as well he he didn't even like he wasn't like you know maybe another guy could have been like oh man I, i'm the starter of the all-star game at first base like i want to play four or five innings you know mm-hmm. and he kind of just let it be and he's like hey enjoy it man have fun and that's awesome i was Good like for you. i really took that like uh, man thank you man I, I really appreciate that yeah so, this is- so yeah this is something that you have forever, which is amazing. Right. So here we are on the second at bat with uh, Kenley. And, and I'd had good numbers in my career against them. But I'm here thinking like, man, all right, I got one out of the way with Granky. So now I got this guy who's vicious cutters <laughs> mm-hmm. and he's having a great year. He's under one in his yard. Yeah, wow. I mean, he was nasty that year, right? Dude, look at those numbers on the board right now. Yeah, it's disgusting. Right? It's, it's disgusting. fifty-seven to two. His K to uh, walk ratio. That's a joke. Right. Yeah. It's it's just filthy. So I'm thinking one thing and one thing only. I already got a hit on the board. The score is one one. It's the ninth. Like I'm not thinking about getting a base hit to left field. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about going big. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking about. What? So you said you had faced him uh, with you were the Padres you, and you faced him when he was in L.A. What was what's like your approach against uh, Kenley with his cutters? Well, I tend to think that his my approach against them is a little bit different than most left-handed hitters. Why do I say that? Because it has to do with my mind and my eyes, with understanding of my swing, right? What I'm trying to do at the moment, what he's trying to do at the moment, what's he what what is he showing me that day? And I was the first hitter. Uh, of the at bat of, of the inning so mm-hmm. i really didn't know what what he was what he had that day all i knew is that he was going to throw me his cutter yeah so for me i'm always thinking about when i face him he's a big guy so it feels like his cutter is just on you mm-hmm. so i never i never try to swing at his cutter in you know anything middle middle in i just don't swing at it you know my thought is to see his cutter like on the outside corner or you know or a ball away but here's the the funny part about it is I try to pull him then. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to pull the pitch that's away, right? And I'm trying to pull that. Now, the pitch has to be on a good location, right? It's got to be up in the zone, mm-hmm. something that I could do damage with. And anything else, you know, I, I fight off or, or I try to get my hits middle of the field. So I'm, my sights are completely like on the opposite side of home plate. Mm-hmm. But here I'm trying to pull this guy. Which okay. most guys would be like, why would you try to pull a pitch away? Well, he throws that cutter, right? That cutter's coming mm-hmm. in. It's a heavy cut. It's a late cut. So it's like a bowling ball when you hit it, pretty much. But if the, my 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 years of facing him, my best approach has been like that, and I've I've had success against it. And so, and now are you? You, you said <clears throat> obviously you're the first batter of the inning. You, you know he's throwing a cutter. You know he throws strikes. Look at his fifty-seven to two ratio there. Right. You're ambushing. I'm ambushing 100 percent because and, and trying to go big fly. I'm going big fly, but with the <laughs> approach of I know the ball is going to be like away. He's just going to get that quick strike just to feel himself, you know, where mm-hmm. he's at. So I was. It's funny. I, I have a leg kick. I, I'm trying to remember the leg kick, and it was like I felt like my leg kick went straight to like home plate. Like it went like <laughs> out there, and then I scissor kicked my swing. My backside just completely like <laughs> falls. Because I'm trying to pull the ball. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm doing two different things at the same time. But, you know, I'm trying to do one thing and one thing only. So it was maybe a little bit of a vicious swing that I wanted to take. Um, but, yeah, it was it was awesome, man, because he, he, he always comes after me. He attacks me all the time, which is awesome. You know, a competitor like that just – I faced him, like, last year, and it was completely different. He was throwing me more two-seamers. He was throwing me curveballs. 
I think he mixed the change up in there and I was uh-huh. like, all right, now he knows that obviously I've, you know, I've had success against them with his cutter. So he's finding different ways to get me out and he's gotten me out. Yeah. He's definitely gotten me out. We've actually featured him on the show before. Uh, nice. uh, David Dahl, uh, came on and was talking about him. We, so we discussed this and, and as a right hander, I approached him the same exact way where I think a lot of guys will try to take that cutter that's going away from you and drive it to right center. I think you have to uh, look to pull him from the right side as well because he has like that little upshoot to his cutter too. It, right, so, it upshoots, it goes up. And so it cuts, so it's like, it's going yeah. in your hands and it's going in your eyes. Yeah, so if you're trying to like kind of go with that pitch, it just hits the top of your barrel and just gets you to like kind of fillet the ball or pop it up. So I always thought, man, I got to get like almost get on top of it and try to right. and try to pull it. Uh, right. That's like my mindset, and then that's kind of I had some success against him thinking that way too. It's just really interesting to hear you say, "I got to pull the same, I got to pull it as well from the left side." Right, I got to pull it from the left side, but with a pitch away. Pitch away, yeah. which you know most lefties will be like, "How can you do that?" Well, <laughs> give it, give it. I think you have to basically understand what his cutter is doing yeah for you to really trust that you have to pull it yeah you gotta see so, it you gotta see it and that's the yeah. only way you know we can sit here and talk to somebody that's never hit a cutter and they'll say ah, okay yeah cool and or i have no idea what you're talking about yeah. but if you know what that cutter f- feels like and looks like when it upshoots mm-hmm. you gotta really you really understand that you really gotta pull this guy i mean there's a the reason right there's a reason why this guy puts up the numbers he does with a seemingly oh. one pitch. I mean, he doesn't throw, he's probably 90, 90 plus percent probably, cutter, yeah. you know, so it does some it's funky disgusting. stuff. It's, it's, just, and he's on, he's on you too, because he's a big boy. Yeah. So it's just, his cutter's just heavy. All right. All star right. game. Top of the ninth, tie score. Yonder's leading off. He's trying to put one in the seats. He's ambushing. Maybe mm-hmm. everybody in the stands probably knew you were you were trying to hit a homer right here. You're trying to be oh, the hero. Man. I would think, yeah, I, th- I think everybody <laughs> kind of knew I was going to ambush too. So it was pretty funny. This is a quick at bat spoiler, but let's, bat. let's let's go. Let's check it out. Got him here. Let's see if we notice anything different. Nothing. Away. And just like you said, I want to point it out. I mean, Yachty obviously show gear. My gosh. Gold gear. Just filthy. What's Iron he, Man. What's he saying to you? Nothing. He's like, hey, man, congratulations on the All-Star game. He had talked to me prior to the game. So he, uh, I, I had known him. We have a good relationship. So he was just really ecstatic for me. And uh, I know Joe West is behind the plate. And, you know, Joe, Joe his uh, – my head coach at, at Miami, at University of Miami, was his uh, fraternity brother. Oh, cool. So he's like, and, you know, he's like, hey, hey Yonder. He's like, I, I hope Jim Morris is watching this. I'm sure he's very proud. That's like, cool. Well, I'm sure he's very proud, too. You know, you're behind the plate, and I'm about to hit. That's cool. So uh, it was pretty cool that he uh, he gave me that time. Yeah, so it was cool. So we saw the hit already, um, but I want to show the location of the pitch because you said, I set my sights on the outer third of the plate, and I'm trying to pull the ball. Well, you see where Yachty's yeah. setting up, and you see where it's thrown. Away, right. And, you know, it comes in right at the last second, and, you know, I just pretty much took a whack at it. So you see my front foot there, it's, like, pretty much uneven mm-hmm. because I'm thinking so much away, but then I'm thinking, you know, you better you better go with your A swing here. Like, don't try to hit a fly ball to left field here, right? You know, try to, try to hit this thing to right center, you know? And I think and if – yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I think if he elevates that ball a little more, I think he might hit a homer. Yeah, it was a good pitch. It was down and away. Yeah. Like, that's a tough pitch. But I'm diving out there so hard that I was able to get to that. Let's watch it again. And a rocket, man. In the All-Star yeah, game, in front of everybody. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh, my. Like, I just can't believe I went two for two. Yep. So and then cool, Sandy man. tells me that that uh, he tells me first pitch I, I should go. He's like, go steal bat. <laughs> I'm here thinking, all right, I've had enough. All right, and sure enough, I go for it and I get a stolen base out of it. So we got to watch that. Is that is that this next pitch? Yeah, I think right. it's uh, there. It is. I left. 
Uh, oh my god. Yeah. First <laughs> I just left. <laughs> For everyone watching, Yonder's not the fleetest of foot, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very heavy, I must say. Uh, I mean it's awesome. I mean it's like a fairy tale story. It really is, and I love that you came on to share it with us because Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. Um but yeah, you know, I love talking hitting and uh there's a lot of things that go and go on in somebody's head you know, the preparation and the mindset and it takes so long, like, right. It takes months and months and months for, for somebody to develop a skill set and to be where you really want to be. Like, it just doesn't happen overnight, you know? And I think for fans, I know we're like missing baseball a lot and it's kind of cool that we, that there's a lot of podcasts and a lot of people talking about hitting or the game in itself, but there's so much that goes into this of a baseball player, the everyday of, of a life of a hitter or the life of a pitcher or the life of just the game in itself that people kind of tend to forget that. Mm -hmm. And I think now during this time, it's kind of to light where it's like, Hey, you just don't get to the ballpark at, you know, five o'clock and put on a uniform and go three for four and hit a homer and you're good. You know, like guys are there every day at 12 o'clock and this is their religion. And there's a lot of work that is put into this, you know, and, it's awesome to see and awesome to talk about and, and hopefully uh, people hearing this and watching this can understand that, you know, it can definitely happen. They can have an all-star game in, in their city and uh, really enjoy it and, you know, fulfill a dream, a, a long time dream, a, ki a kid's dream and, and really uh, have fun doing something that you love. Oh, I love it, man. Again, yeah. I appreciate you coming on here, sharing the story. Absolutely, no doubt. We're going to have you on again to talk some at-bats from this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Let's do it. Thanks, Jan. All right, guys. Thank you, guys.